60 line 3 and it should be Golden. Golden, thanks for hanging on. Golden. Hello there. Hello, Golden. What do you want to tell us? Uh, I want to do an impression of uh, a chap called Paul Wright. He plays for Kilmarnock Football Club. Okay, this is exactly. This would be, if I had to use an absolute uh, 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 a template for what we want in these, it would be Paul Wright who plays for Kilmarnock because... Now equal top of the Scottish Premiership. Yeah. Even so. Yeah. I'm still oh, saying I, I would defy anyone within a, a thousand mile radius. No, everybody, knows what, everybody knows what Paul's striking partner, Ali McCoy, sounds like, but nobody knows what ha Paul sounds how like. How comes you know uh, what he sounds like? Uh, well, it's based on, say, you've got to have a wee setup here. You've got to be kind of uh, doing a post-match interview with me, because he always answers the, the same way in a post-match oh, interview. Good. Oh, Would you work for the club line or something? Uh, no, I don't know. I just hear him on the wireless. No, oh, I see. I see. Radio Scotland, you know. So, um, uh, you want me to do the interview with you? You you do things like you say, so you're happy with the goal of the day, you know. Okay, yeah, okay. There's, so, there's um, got to be closed questions. They kind of... I know. I know. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all right. I do that. So, here okay. we go. Um, okay, so you're going to tell everyone that... It's, it's, this means nothing to no one, but believe us, this is exactly how Paul Wright does his post-match interviews, courtesy of Gordon. So uh, I'll be with, standing here with uh, Paul Wright. Uh, Paul, uh, a goal today, and you must be happy with that. Mm, definitely. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paul, uh, you're still quite a, a few points off the pace. Do you think there's enough left of the season for you to get up amongst the front runners? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. uh, the, boys, the, boys, the boys are all behind, you know, but we're all, we're, all, we're all playing for each other. Play like a team, you know what I mean? That's, that's the secret. No, but obviously the sending off didn't do you any favours towards the end. Uh, how did you, uh, did you get a good view of it? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's the more? It's not okay. so definite. But Paul, um, Wednesday night, uh, it's a big game over there at St Mirren. Uh, a lot of people are writing you off already, but I should imagine you still think you have a chance. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, they give me claps and them, you know what I mean? Uh, they, they, they're really all right in the range of isn't they? But uh, I will give them the respect uh, that they're due, like, but... Uh, we definitely got a chance. OK, uh, last question, Paul. A lot of uh, speculation that uh, uh, Martin O'Neill will be joining the club as a new manager. Would you be looking for a move there, or, or, or would you say you're happy at the club at the moment? Uh, definitely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the way the game goes. You know, a, a, a new manager. I'll I'll just start, yeah. <laughs> carry on. I can't hear a word. Oh, I won't carry on. I refuse now. Oh, man, He's too man. good. He's just going to say definitely for the rest of the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, of course, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, Gordon, that was superb. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, bring Gordon there. I'll tell you what we've got to do. Can we get one of those clean? Uh, Gordon, just do it for us. Uh, definitely. <laughs> right, so that's on tape now. <laughs> and I'm afraid that is an absolute design classic. <laughs> that, is, that is superb. I should have never watched Paul Wright. He's always taking penalties and things. We've got to get a tape of Paul Wright actually doing a post-match interview. <laughs> Gordon, you're a hero. <laughs> superb. Do you know how long I could have asked you another dozen questions there? It's just too good. What do you thought? It was um, good to make no. sure. There was one which yeah, wasn't definitely I know, at all. Wasn't definitely at all. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Someone, someone whose name I can't find on this piece of paper has sent us another list of football names. This week, in order to uh, change the pattern, you read me the clubs, because there's some obscure clubs on right. it. A European, but I've crossed out the ones you already had on, so these are all brand new to the names. show. These are actual players' Sit names. Down, right? Daddy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> S oh, I love these. Here we go. SV Meppen, Germany. Thomas the Wonderful Adabingbong. <laughs> no! Get on with it. Real players' names. Whack, Morocco. Thomas Brassas. <laughs> Newcastle United. Uh, Holland. Uh, Brian Pinnis. Uh, <laughs> Venio. Holland, Ben Lowe, Holland, Jan Bong, <laughs> Dusseldorf, Austria, Willy Fiedler, Saint Etienne, France, Laurent Wawa, <laughs> Lens, Switzerland, <laughs> Philip Sucks, <laughs> two to go, two to go, Mullenbeek, Holland, Ricky Fanny, <laughs> Chemnitzer, Germany, Agimanti Gulu Titimu. <laughs> Agimanti Gulu Titimu. And is it one for Eladia, Russia? I've got it. I think that's Agimanti Gulu Titimu. Gulu Titimu. Ladies and gentlemen, we always end with a load of names. Thank you very much, Dean. Phil, well done. Ola and Paul, sir. Jamie and Ned, Tim, I'm sure we did it. Carolyn and Tony, like Jimmy, you didn't have a lot to do, but thanks for being with us. And this has been Talk Radio. I've been Daddy Baker. And I've been Danny Kelly. And this has been Paul Gascoigne saying, yes, I've signed for some. Oh, Chester City. We'll be back again 11.30 next Saturday morning. I'll see you all in. Uh, you've got stuff going around. Bung someone through, Carolyn. There's We're no one doing good. football oh, now. Come on. on. Give us a letter over there, thank you. Do, do poor old... Oh, uh, yeah. uh, he's, well, go on, you give it. Mick McSorley, the yeah. clairvoyant barber of Leeds, yeah. who is uh, the number one supporter of and contributor to the show. Sorry, Philip Hewitt. I'll, um, I'll, I'll suck up to you later. Um, and last week, uh, Mick sent something that I think is pretty damn good. Uh -huh. I swore that I would read it out because Mick and I got into a bit of war. When I didn't read his stuff out, he inundated me with, with full stuff. Yeah, we, agreed, up, we agreed that we would read out his better stuff. Um, at half a show when I hadn't read it out after two hours, he sent us a fax just with the word 
Ahem, uh -huh, yeah. across it. Yeah. Well, now I've had a, per a letter and a communication from the same p same story, but now communicated in letter form with uh, uh, yeah, well. voting um, written <laughs> across the top of We better do it. Um, what he what he's done this week is to point out um, that uh, Richard Keyes has now developed the fantastic habit, a la Alan Shearer and other people who are going, ah, oh, the tea. Richard Key is that one is a gorilla in a suit the, photograph? At the bottom, it? there's a picture of Richard Keyes onto which been, oh, sorry, a Richard Keyes type suit onto which has been super imposed a gorilla's head. Because, <laughs> of course, Richard Keyes is a very, very hairy yes, man. He is. Uh, and he talks about himself in the third person. He yeah. does. He yeah. now starts to say, well, Richard Keyes thinks this can be the big one this afternoon. And well, if, well, you can hear him this afternoon, and what we're going to say, we're going to say to Richard this afternoon is, if, if he does we'll say, uh, you, I mean, it doesn't work as a radio presenter, because you say, I'm, uh, this is Richard Keyes talking. However, if Richard this afternoon does work in the third person, uh, I understand he's going to give a can of beer to every listener. Anyway, well, yeah. the deal is here, and so she says, you know, for example now, when he goes to the, to the canteen at Sky, at Sky Television, Instead of saying, can I have a bacon sandwich, he just says, can Richard Keyes have a, a bacon, bacon sandwich? Apparently, this right. is exactly what he wrote to us himself and told us. Now, the genius of Mick McSaw is that he's worked out there for him. Richard Keyes' mind... Oh, can I just say, by the way? Sorry, Dan. I'm yeah, sorry. Right. This, sorry. This is very it's episite and very pertinent. It's just, this is complex. But, it, but also, but this, may, this may be... This may, uh, may uh, Richard, of course, is presenting the uh, sport on talk radio this afternoon. Is he? Yes, he is. So you may want to carry on with it. Yeah. You may not want to carry on. I certainly <laughs> do want to carry on with it because, I, I'm, unlike you, here, let me just drink it up. There's, there's my liver, and it's red and not lily coloured. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, no, this is fine. This is good. And he goes. So in his mind, Richard has confused the phrase Richard Keys yeah. with the phrase I. Right. Okay. He's replaced them one to the other. Okay. And so therefore, he said, if only Richard Keyes had been a very talented songwriter, he could have written the following <laughs> songs. For 10cc, he would have written The Dean and Richard Keyes. <laughs> Richard Keyes and The Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Keyes, this is, and then of course the number one hit for Lisa Stansfield, Richard Keyes, been around the world, but Richard Keyes, Richard Keyes, Richard Keyes, Richard Keyes, can't find my baby. <laughs> Do you think I'm Richard Keyes? <laughs> Do you think Richard Keyes sexy, rather, by Rod Stewart? Clint Eastwood, Richard Keyes talks to the trees. <laughs> How could this have lain on the desk? This is too good. T that's how I taught oh. them. That's how I taught them. Tina Charles. Richard Keyes loves, loves to love, love, but Richard Keyes' baby just loves to dance. <laughs> oh, God, <they're> like, uh, <laughs> the kinks. Richard Keyes is an ape man. He's an ape ape man, which of course is very opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Otter wand. Uh. D. Richard Keyes, S. C. O. <laughs> oh, I'm gone. Oh. Joe Nama Trading, Richard Keyes, Richard Keyes, Richard Keyes, for me, myself, and I. <laughs> Jane Birkin and, and Serge Gamebra, Je Richard Keyes, Tem. <laughs> and finally, from TV and radio, he oh. brings us with Nail and Richard Keyes. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Keyes, Claudius. <laughs> <laughs> and honey, Richard Keyes from the kids. <laughs> That's genius, Mick. That Thank you. Is He's got to go this way. He's too good. He's They'll too all be on the good. website oh, on football365.co.uk. I've actually broke out in a sweat. No, that is just... Uh, I'm a very unpoor person of you, that. <laughs> <laughs> that was superb. <laughs> uh, Richard, <laughs> Richard will be carrying the, uh, the, the sport this afternoon on Talk Radio. It's line six, and this is someone called Joanne. Good morning, Joanne. Morning, Danny. Hello, Hello Cyril. Hello, Cyril. How are you? Uh, you know, as I say, we we'll leave your addresses because we want to send you a good Christmas present. How are you, Joe? I'm fine. Well, and uh, I'll leap in here. How's your week been? Tell me, it's been very quiet. Nothing's happened, Joe, yeah? Nothing's happened at all, no. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh. Hear that laugh. I actually bought that. I thought it can't yeah. be every week, can it? You know. uh, you bought that cost. I mean, uh, literally. I thought, what? you know. Hang on, let me respond. Let me respond. Guys, why did Danny Baker buy that story? She's a woman. Oh, yes. yes that's right. I, yeah. bought, I, bought, I bought anything she would say. <laughs> Joe, how's your week been? Um, well, both fours been and gone out my life now. Oh, oh. <laughs> both, both fours never really in your life, as I remember. No, just one night only. <laughs> but he only, he only didn't he just he just cuddled you both four didn't he? No. Didn't he? he didn't. No. Hang on. The last time we heard, yeah. you did, he had identified himself. He said, oh, "Am I both four?" Yeah. And you said, "Yes, you are." So when he could be. When was the consummation with both four then? Saturday night. Last Saturday. Oh, last Saturday night. Oh, God. Yeah. At both three's place. At both three's place. Good God, again. <laughs> could you hear? Could you hear both three um, uh, ligging around outside trying to listen or? Uh, well. That, that, that would have been Bo Peep. <laughs> Very good. Well, <laughs> good Bo Peep. <laughs> 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 
Sorry, Joe, I've gone there. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, go on. Well, those, those three was there. Lie me. Well, go on. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Joe, go on. Well, both of me was there, but um, he didn't join in. <laughs> oh, well, he's going to be called BP for that one. BP. He was. There. Was the invitation there for him to join him? Um, it was, but he didn't want to. Well, I don't get that. I mean, I, I, yeah, well, I, actually, I do get that. Yeah, um, I'm thinking back now to when I was a raw writer on the enemy, and the chance came up, and I ran, I ran like a raw writer yeah, on the enemy. Start, you can start a separate game here, people, right. of guess who Danny Baker was invited to have. Um, oh, it's a pop band. Three, yeah, it was. Band. It's an old fashioned. We start doing the oh, clues. There's nine well. number. There's nine top ten hits. They did. Yeah, yeah they, did. they did. Yeah, yeah. 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 And there was a lot of them. Uh, anyway, but no, it wasn't the two members of that group, by the way. So, oh no, no, it's just one of those involved. Anyway, so uh, this was last Saturday night, and both. Yeah. Three's flat. So what, you were all sharing coffee and stuff, and then he said, well, I'll turn in, and you turned in. Well, it was a bit awkward at first, I must admit. We played a game of Twister. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> we did. Um, had a few drinks, and, yeah, one thing led to another. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, 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 and now, so how comes it's ease out of your life, then, if you can just consummate it? Well, you know, both of you said he didn't mind as long as it was a one-off. Yeah, oh, I see. said that last week. That's what you did say. That's right. So that yeah. means that you have now, Joe, if, if my, ca mm -hmm. my, my calculations, and I have got a team of scientists in America working on this, mm -hmm. that means you have now had frankly carnal knowledge of mm -hmm. four members of this same club team. Um, hang on. Uh, no, five. No. Hang on. Where's the, where's the five? We're at the bow four. Hang on. There was the one that got transferred. Well, there's one of my original oh, three who never got, who I've never had anything to do with again. Now, hang on. There was the three in the, there was the three in the back there's, four, wasn't there? There's the three to start off with. Yeah, yeah they were all in the back four. Right, one of, start writing the names. But one of them got transferred. Lost, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that, that, that was bows one, two, and three. Right. I got introduced to um, the now bow three, which is another bow three. If you know what I mean. It was the original three. And I got introduced yes, to the yes, other yes, one. Yes, yes, no, yes. I've got, got, got a handle on this. When she first called us in answer to, have you ever slept with a Premier League player? Yes, Premier player. yes. Uh, something like that. Uh, there were three bows. She said, I've slept with three of the players, right? Yes. And, uh, and a manager. No, I've lost right? the, No, the no, trade. and a manager. That was the original call, right? Yes. Yeah. And then uh, uh, after that, after that, yes, uh, yes. then, then, but that, that was all over then. But then bow yeah. one rang up. Yes, now we've got, got a new bow so three. There's a new bow yeah. three. She's now, right. I can't remember who. I can remember. Well, okay, let's do the first. We'll be right back. We're going to do the maths. I'm going to get an abacus out, and we'll be right back. Hang on. So, uh, okay, now we think we, we, we've pretty much done the, uh, yeah. well, no, you have, because off the We've air, done the calculus, yes. The air, <laughs> you've got the, the things there. So it's five footballers and a manager. Yeah. Are you wearying of this? Uh, well, why don't you get yourself, a, you know, a fellow just you sort of meet in the pub or something? No, I don't you, want that. You still like footballers? I do like footballers, but I've drawn a line under that team now. That's it with that team. Have what, you, oh, what's, have happened, you, what's happened this Have you searched the entire team? squad for any further prospects? I've searched the entire squad and but there's what, what's no... Something's the happened in the last seven days because you sound a little um, bitter. No, well, my ex-manager rang me in the week. Yeah. And <laughs> slightly the worse for drink. Um, he told me he's told his wife. Oh. And I can tell anyone I want now, but I'm not going to. No, no, no. 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 Coco. No, no, right. No. And he it, 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 it had a few beers and he said he's fessed up. Yep. Wow. Uh, so. <laughs> so, they, they, oh, yeah, I suppose it does make you think. Oh well, this is all getting to. You know, what, what, what started as, as a light felicitation is now starting to it starts to weigh heavy. I suppose. Well, it wasn't with him because I've seen him for quite a long time. Were you? So, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought. Yeah. He was, oh, really? How long? About six months. Were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was he good to you? Oh yeah, I was a bit of a oh. pet woman for a while. Oh, well, that's it. Uh, well, well, we've heard someone's being paid to attend a football match today, so we're not going to cast aspersion <laughs> in your direction. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but, but to be fair, I mean, it, uh, you know, you sound, you sound a little. That's not bitter. You sound a little hurt. That's what you sound this week. Um, he said some hurtful things, but no. But, but he's booze. Oh, well. But he's drunk, so that's an good excuse, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we all have to. We all still have to stick by that one, do we? All right. Okay. Yeah. And so, if it's not going to be um, uh, that team anymore, oh. I mean, surely it's not going to be the same, is it? Going elsewhere. Yeah, well, there's always the away teams. Oh, yeah. Have you ever had any success with away teams? I mean, it, can you pick and choose? Um, I have. I'm not suggesting, you know, you, you take what you get, but I mean, you know, do, it's, had you put your mind to it, could, could, you, could you have had further conquests elsewhere, do you think? Probably. Yeah. 
Well, who, who uh, I mean, did you mention the other one? Who's your dream player? Kazaragi. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, uh, should you ever conquer him, of course, he'll become just another one of the bow numbers, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless... He's uh, head on a pole outside your garden. Hang on, <laughs> who, who's they got today, Dan? Who's they got today? Uh, there's, there's, hang on, no, one off the match today. Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. Where's the fixtures, Greg? Hang on, hang on. Uh, so how comes you can, uh, you're dumping all the bows all the lot? Oh, no, I'm not dumping them, but I'm not going to add to them. Oh, I see. Well, that's fair enough. That's, well, that's, okay. uh, that's incredibly restrained on you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Well, uh, hang on. I'm just going to check one second. I'm just to check out where they are today. Hang on. Let's have a look. Where? Oh, okay, maybe. All right, Joe, can we speak to we speak to you again tonight? Yeah. Thanks for hanging on during the news there and all of that. I'm sorry, no, no, uh, yeah, don't, don't, maybe I'm just uh, uh, picking up the wrong vibration entirely. You sound, you sound a little hurt this week, and I don't like that. There's another thing, Danny. Yeah. Um, both three might be leaving. Really? Why? Yeah, he's not happy. He's huh? not happy at his club. Does he say why? No, you don't go into too much detail, Joe. Yes, he, yes. All right, well, now, no, because it's because I was, yeah, because, yeah, because yeah, we'll find it off the air. There it is, there's this week's message from Joe, and we'll hear from her again tonight. These football club club cards, they're starting up now, aren't they? You can buy, you can get your mortgage and your insurance Do by what? buying a Spurs card or a Millwall card. Anyone who's bought one of those, I want to hear all What's about this? the scheme. What is this? What is this? There's a scheme now. The football clubs are going to start um, selling mortgages and life insurance. <laughs> a Millwall mortgage? Yes, yeah, indeed. A copper, copper buttoned investment. And and you, you'll get a, Your credit card will be a man. This Man United credit card, isn't there? Hang and on, all so that. you've got to go up to Millwall and say, uh, for 25 years, I'm going to trust you with my money. For 20 <laughs> 25 years. That'll do it. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll tell you what. I'll, yeah, who do you bank with? Millwall. <laughs> <laughs> And There's also, no try, try, trying to find a, a cash point that has a big lion on top of it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, that takes your card and draws money out and doesn't With, give you the money. Uh, picture of Keith Stevens. <laughs> yeah, you put in your card, put into a £25, please. Keith Stevens says, thank you, and nothing comes no, out. It, it, you, go up to, you go up to a Millwall thing and you type it and it says, please enter your number. In goes your number. And then you stand there and it goes, now please take your card. And then it was, and no card comes out. And so you type in, could I have my card? And it says, what card? And you go, my credit card. So what are you talking about? Bugger off. <laughs> so there, there, that would be the Millwall cash point, ladies and gentlemen. What have you got there? Yeah. This, because the, the previous fellow, the previous caller had told us about a shower-related incident, I have now relented, and I'm going to treat you, this early in the show, to a fantastic letter about showers. It comes from um, Nigel Stedman, who lives in Stoke Gifford, which is in Bristol. Okay. Um, it starts off very confusing, so bear with me while I read you this. 20 years ago, when I was 18, it says, uh, I played football for my local side, Filton Town. Right. One week we had to play a side called Old Sodbury, and it's inverted commas Old Sodbury, okay. at their place. Now, Old Sodbury um, used to use an old tin bath for footballers to wash down their legs, exactly as we heard last week. Sure. They had an old tin bath to wash for outside, blah, 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 blah. This season, they had been ordered by the Bristol District League to stop this practice. They had to provide proper facilities for opposing players. So what they had done was, because they didn't have money for showers, was that they had said that players from the team had to offer the away players the use of their showers in their houses in and around the ground. Okay? Wow. With me so far. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, I was offered a shower at a nearby house. This offer I took up owing to the fact I was going out after the football to a disco. So here we are, the 18th... So you could say, so supposing you were marking me, and yeah. you could say, yeah. can I use your ass afterwards to shower? And you yeah. had to say yes. Yeah, they had to offer the showers to them, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I went back to this person's house. He was called Martin. And he showed me to the bathroom and said to give him a call when I had finished. I then got into the shower, pulled the curtain around myself, and started soaping up. Okay. Whilst I was showering... I've got a horrible... While I was showering, this. I heard the door open, and someone else come in and lift the toilet seat up. <laughs> To my horror, I realised that it was Peter's girlfriend or wife who started to use the toilet to wh his horror. <laughs> while I was still showering. Yeah. As she continues to use the toilet, and we don't need the graphic yeah, okay, description yeah, yeah, that yeah. goes on here, <laughs> she starts to tell me, who she obviously thought was her partner, <laughs> What she was going to do to me no, in the shower. Now he's Shush, no, 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 it's not. Look, no. When she finished, promising me, the detail says it must be true, and she promised me, quote, my favourite treat. No. <laughs> this, see, I don't. See, you said earlier on this is like a letter in Fiesta, and it is. No, no, no. I like the idea they're no, going to shout, but girlfriend. Oh, all right. Girlfriend comes to town. As a very shy 18 year old, I was too scared to say anything, just stood under the shower with a flannel covering my rapidly decreasing penis. <laughs> this continued for what seemed like a lifetime, it was probably only five minutes. It was, I was saved by Martin himself banging on the door saying, Nigel, have you finished yet? 
and his partner let out a mighty oh, scream. No, 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 no. <laughs> let out a mighty scream, flushed yes. the toilet and ran out. Oh, wow. I dressed and left and now this goes on that's fantastic enough. Mm -hmm. Next season the showers were still not ready at Old Sodbury and I feigned injury to miss the game as my nickname after the game I won't go into what his yeah, nickname yeah, yeah. has become. Um, I couldn't face Martin or his that's uh, a superb partner. Story. You see, I, I I mean I'm, I'm all for it. I love the idea that the uh, you have to allow people into your house to change. Uh, and and if, there are, if there's a, any other instances that I'd like to hear of them. But the idea that the girlfriend then walked in and started... Uh, because, uh, you know, I've been around the block. Uh, before I was a married man, I don't... You know, I was, I was a bit of a rake. However, not once. Not once. <laughs> what? Everyone's laughing. No one my, believes my, that. My, my invocation of 17th century euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the very idea, Danny. Not no, the invocation. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, but I can't believe that women out there walk into the cars and, and then say, so, oh, he's in there, and I will now announce loud what we're going to do later Including on. Including my for your favourite treat. Including, uh, mm. I, I think the fellas, I, I think it's embro good embroidery, and I like him. Don't get me wrong, I'm trying to... You're you know, going to spoil this show for the letters. No, Everyone no, is no, any no, good no. now. Everyone is any God, you pretend it's not real. No, well, I don't, well, I, I'm only hoping, voicing the cynicism of the listeners, thinking, well, I don't know. I like the, I, I like the idea. It's, it's a very vaguely plausible, but and I, I dare say you'll be replaying it in your own home to see you. Also, 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 do you see, do, do, I, do, do women walk in and go to the cows in front of blokes. He wasn't. She couldn't sit. She's like, yeah, well, yeah. yeah he's he's not married shower. people do all that sort but of thing. I've been married seventeen years. Perish the thought. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I've, <laughs> you, you've never, for, you, you have never, you have never urinated in front of your wife. No, always let her go first. Hey! Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Come on, lighten the tone out there. Get this to... And now, of all nights, I don't know what this is. No, but if Danny says it, it, it's good enough for me, and I'll just play this in. <laughs> this is going to be cool. Okay, okay. okay go. And I, I think, it, I think the, the the fellow has written it and said. Please don't mention my name on my work, but we're going to respect this because it's such a good thing. Well, no. um, and uh, it, this comes under the category of small revenge, the Herbert Chapman thing. Okay. Okay. In 1970, um, my mates, uh, I'm going to read it verbatim because it's very well written. Okay. In 1970, my class had to leave our own school for two days and travel a couple of miles to Gregory's Grammar School in Ardwick, Manchester, in order to take our 11 plus exam. So we're talking about some brainy youngsters here taking their 11 plus. Okay. Um, under the pressure of exam, myself and two friends decided we would try and sneak into Manchester City's Grand Main Road and just sneak onto the pitch. To our amazement, we actually managed to get into the hallowed turf where we stood nervously for a few seconds before running into the away team's dugout where we pissed all over the bench. The three of us were laughing hysterically when some old fellow appeared. He was very angry anyway to grab us. He managed to get hold of Steve, one of my mates, as myself and the other lad legged it as fast as skinny legs could carry us. Later on, we were stunned to learn that the old gear had actually taken Steve to the police station on Platt Lane where our pal had to wait tearfully until his mum and sister arrived to pick him up. Yeah. Now, I believe, that this, I believe that this event was the turning point in young Steve's life, from which he has never recovered. In fact, young Steve was so ashamed of his childhood at urinating dugout episode that he stopped using his Christian name and is now known to one and all as Morrissey. Wow. You probably don't believe my story, but Chris Lukes, myself, and Stephen Patrick Morrissey all know that it is true, and that is good enough for me. Wow, look at that. Morrissey, as an 11 year old, instead of going to do his 11 plus, he, he urinated, and he urinated on the visitor's bench. In Main Road. But see, again, and now, I'm, of course it is. It, um, it's way up amongst the top six, but you being such a Morrissey fan. Yeah. This is cool. Oh, this is, this is, this is um, pure spun gold. It's going to be going straight to, to Q Magazine. That, that, that is that, a wonderful thing. In fact, I must this is, uh, <laughs> That is extraordinary. Yes, it is. And it was Morrissey. Yeah. And, and he urinated in Man but, City's And he was caught by the authorities, and there started his trauma. Uh, Dan, anything quick over there? Well, no, no, well, you need something quick, do you? Uh, yeah. yeah, all right, very quickly then. Um, a pumice update, important pumice update. Remember, now, why are we talking about pumice? Last week we we, we, we did cuttlefish and so, what yeah, is talcum powder. Is, and, then that's, said, and pumice, what is pumice? And we discovered that pumice is a, is a rock. Yeah. And then you said, how the hell can a rock float? Well, thanks to uh, our Stipes, uh, Robert Stipes from, uh, from Rock Ferry. I have this great story, Rock Ferry's in the Wirral. Um, he says, he says uh, go, pumice is very like crunchy bar. In fact, it is full of air pockets, but it is an actual, what a actual rock. illusion. It yeah. is. In the, in the 1880s, when Krakatoa erupted, a little, little break there, thinking about Krakatoa. What of course, a great Krakatoa. Thing. Yeah. A lousy film. And yep. Somebody has got to say it, and it was actually yeah. West of Germany. Yeah, 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 of course it was. Oh, no. In the 1980s, so when Krakatoa yeah. erupted. Just, I'm just trying to put a little heat under the show. Yeah, go on. So much pumice was thrown out onto the sea. Because of course it was a pumice. Uh, you could walk all yeah. the way to Sarawak. I wish, I wish it was that simple, Danny. I no? really do. That it made a great floating island three miles across, a pumice island floating in the sea. 
some people thought it was a solid island and recently made homeless by the by the earth, earthquake and um, uh, volcanic That's eruption, there. built shelters on the Pumice Island. <laughs> One morning, they woke up to find that a storm during the night had carried their island away over the sea and out of uh, sight of any other land. They were not rescued by a passing ship for 18 days on the, uh, on the Pumice Island. And they had no idea. Uh, but at first, no, you, I mean, I just, I just thought, here, OK, OK, here then is my very quick, uh, oh, this is a work in progress. Here then is my impression of somebody waking up on Pumice Island, having built their new home there to find it floating. All right. <coughs> uh, OK, so here we go. So, uh, uh, <sighs> Angela, I can't get a picture on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> you moved the aerial? No. <laughs> you wouldn't get a picture for weeks, would you? I've got it again. Oh, it's gone again. They floated away. Yeah, they floated away after a storm. <laughs> That's a I don't know quite where that leaves vis-a-vis -vis today's oh. premiership action. No. But nevertheless, <laughs> wow. Uh, this, morning, this evening we did plan to bring you the uh, uh, wooden bow tie story from... Uh, uh, now, yes, I'm sure he's on there. Can you... Uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, Gordon's on 12. Hang on. Gordon? Good evening, Gordon. Hello there. Gordon, now, uh, you, you brought us a great story this morning about... Um, what's his name? Uh, Paul Wright. Paul Wright. And uh, if you weren't listening this morning, I'm sorry, you just missed one of the great moments of, uh, of radio, I'm going to say. But uh, previously you were here because you brought us a story of the wooden bow tie, Gordon. Now, when you uh, were told, would you retell it, you kind of rolled your eyes and said, what did I, you... S I said, yeah. how can you walk into the river twice, the same river, when you cannot walk into the same river once? Exactly. Now, I'm, I've been thinking, I've been doing nothing but brooding about this and state I've of I've brought Eric Cantona all um, afternoon to see what he thought about that. And I, I think you're right, Gordon. I don't think you should tell it again. Good right. guy. Yeah, I, I, I do think so. Um, however, you do have a brand new catchphrase. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to have to, I'm going to drag you into that, so it's a bargain. We Let me see how they got on today. We'll, we'll see go we through can... the, uh, how did they get on this afternoon? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no. Nil, nil. Yeah. But it keeps you top, doesn't it? They go on top. It keeps, clear of rangers. it keeps you top. So, uh, so if you want to listen more, it doesn't matter. Uh, we know he's not your mark. We know he's a Dundee or Dundee United fan. That's right. Bow tie. Bow tie. But it, uh, was it Dundee or Dundee United, Gordon? United. United. Of course, it was United. Dundee United. Uh, See, so I, I basically, it. if we're doing a post-match interview now with Paul Wright, this is how it would go. Paul, a uh, bit disappointing, just nil, nil. But uh, you must be delighted to see Kilmarnock right at the top. Definitely. The boys done well. We're, we're clear as a team, you know what I mean? Mm hmm. And uh, I, I guess that uh, afterwards, even though you're disappointed, uh, uh, you will be celebrating tonight because uh, who knows how long you stay there? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Got to make the most of the moment. You know, here could swallow in that. Absolutely, Paul. And one last question. Uh, a lot of people surprised to see you up at the top, but uh, do you think in a couple of months' time you'll still be there? Yeah. I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> He's good, there, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to bring you the bow tie story because a thing of beauty is a joy forever and it stands in crystalline in the football museum. And the BBC uh, have the copyright Thank you, it. exactly. <laughs> no, no, oh, that's, that's why we should do it again. We should re-record it. Yeah. Some of the some stories have been re-recorded for your <laughs> comfort. <laughs> Baker that's and Kelly are represented by some of the original Baker and Kelly. 0500 uh, Who's this team who, um, who beat uh, Colchester today 4-1? Bellington Terriers. They're named after a dog, right? Now, are there any other sides out there at Sunday Park that were named after things more humiliating than a dog? Have you got a team you say, you know what they're named after? Maybe it's an old murderer or something. <laughs> but teams that are actually named after things as opposed to places, give us a call. 0500 1053 89. Uh, things that are named after things, not places. Uh, so Bedlington Terriers are named after a breed. <laughs> what used to do that? Oh, that's 3 2 1 with Ted Rogers, wasn't it? Mm. Now, I'll give you the first one. I'll give you football teams that are named after things, not places. I'll give you the first one. <laughs> Bedlington Terriers is named after a dog. So we'll start with that one. Bedlington Terriers is named, named after, after a dog. A dog. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about that now? Yeah. You know the little plays they used to do, and they used to do all the yeah. clues? Them. Oh, you're a, you're a bright Bam. fella. Did you used to understand what, what they were getting No, at? I like, I, I, you know, it's still on. It's on, it's on tonight. It's on the, the station that's got a question mark. What's that, the quiz TV thing? Yeah. Challenge. Challenge, Challenge TV. Telly, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I said, um, I said radio is the last, uh, last refuge of people who can't get on telly. No, Challenge TV is the last <laughs> refuge of people who can't get on telly. Uh, and they're there. They go, OK, you've, um, you've decided to reject Is it still Ted Rogers? Oh, no, it's, it's the old ones. It's the original oh, old great, ones. Oh, great, great, great. You've decided 
decided to reject the bottle of Budweiser. Okay, well, what's Budweiser? Budweiser's a beer. Now, you're not supposed to drink beer when you're driving, so could this be a car? So the rhyme said, uh, don't drink this beer but over here, but later on, you might have fun. Uh, now, we don't know what they... So what would you might have fun with later on? It could be a car, because you always go out and use... No, it's not a car. Now, uh, of course, what do you do at the end of the day? You get into bed. Could it be some nice bed in? No, it's not, because what do you have fun with later on in the night? You have fun when you take the rubbish out. It's dusty bed! Yeah. Huh? What? Uh, where did that turn come, huh? Where would that be? Even the most mind-numbing game show is enjoyable because you can basically follow the path of what's going on mm -hmm. and somebody might win a chest of drawers. Yep, exactly. But not on that. I uh, know. Please, Janice help Long me. was on that. She was a contestant on it. What? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, bang someone through there, Phil. This is line six and this will be Robin. Robin! Hello, Robin. Nice to have you around. Hello, <laughs> Robin. What do you want to say, Robin? It, it, was, it wasn't a football cleat days as such, but just before that World Cup, okay. they um, showed matches from basically all the leagues that countries had qualified. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they showed a brilliant match. I've forgotten now who it was. It was West Brom. Yeah. But I can't remember who they were playing. But, but the thing that sticks in my mind, it was a, obviously a, a midwinter game, and it was in absolutely atrocious conditions. Yeah. And you could hear the English commentary in the, in the background. Uh-huh. And um, I think it was Motson, but whoever it was says, you know, it's, it's quite spongy in the middle. Quite spongy in the middle, yeah. And uh, from that moment onwards, the uh, Peruvian commentator, who was basically translating the English commentary, yeah. referred to um, Brian Robson as uh, quite spongy in oh! the middle. <laughs> That's great. Quite so, spongy. So, goes, quite spongy. Robson. He thought he was quite spongy. Yeah, oh, spongy. You know, I'll, I'll be absolutely honest. There was a time when I thought this journey is not going to yeah, re yeah. reap no. any reward. Oh, it re the journey very, seemed longer than that yeah. from Belfast to Lima. It, but no, it was a very good one. A very, very good payoff. Then we've got exactly a minute. Okay. These are all players. Can we have the music, please? <laughs> Music, please, my strong. Yeah, go on, yeah, go on. These are all players, what? They're currently playing in Israel. Okay, It fine. doesn't work without them. We know it doesn't work without them. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it on top of it now. Go on. Ronan Schweig, Eric Schricke, Gay Griff, <laughs> Motti Sasson, Gamil Harder, Offa Talker, Lyron Basis, Addy Fux, <laughs> F-U-X-E, Moshe Glam, Avi Fass, Assy Tubby, <laughs> Guy Gat, Assy Bomb, Assy Dom, <laughs> Gabby Pecker, Eli Drix, Noam Shoam, <laughs> Gonan Bottle, <laughs> Go on, sure. Nur Shitrick, <laughs> Offer Shitrick, Sharon Miner, Dudu Heffer, uh -oh. and of course, Roman Pets. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll see you on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. No, Alf Ramsey, I, I must do the Alf Ramsey anecdote. Anytime you're at a table and anybody says, anybody remember Sir Alf Ramsey, this is the anecdote you need to tell. After he'd been uh, le le let go by England, still very much the most famous football figure in England, mm. and you know how uptight Alf Ramsey was, not yeah, yeah, yeah. to pronounce his words. Um, uh, he is co-commentating on a big international match with Brian Moore, somewhere else in, in, in the far reaches of Eastern Europe. Okay. And the game's going on, la, la, la. suddenly the floodlights cut. Brian Moore is now left to fill furiously, and any of us have ever, ever done any well, anything, any public speaking you've ever done, you've got to stretch. fill the gap is mm -hmm. always a difficult thing. So Brian Moore, after speaking for five solid minutes about the possibility and the way England have been playing Ireland, eventually turns to his co commentator who's after being paid to be there, let's yeah. be fair, says, so, Sir Alf, how long do you think the lights will be out? I am not electrician. <laughs> <laughs> I am not electrician, was what he said back to him. <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah, I'm not, I am not electrician. <laughs> Oh, give us something from over there, Dan. What have you I got? would love to. I'm going to go straight in, wade straight in with the cruelest crowd. Re recount oh, last I don't, I don't Re like these. Recount I don't. last week's story of how cruel the crowd leads were. On. These are well, last week there was a girl who was a part of a, a baton twirling on a bunch of schoolgirls, and she was leading them off twirling her baton, and uh, they were all singing, You're so fat, it's unbelievable. Okay. She was going up and down the pitch with her mum and dad there and everything. And, uh, I'm sorry, I just don't. There is no I don't, surprise. I can talk about urinals overflowing, but I cannot, I cannot hear that. And I would have thought, for, you know, for Millwall fans, there is no surprise. They are by no means a bla blameless over at the Den Newsly, but no. Leeds and Only Portsmouth... Only on full-grown people are voting age. Leeds and Portsmouth, I would have thought, would always been right up there as favourites. They are, yeah. Yeah, crowd. Yeah. Okay, this is from this is uh, no, 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 Peter Hack in Haven in Hampshire, who's a yeah, Portsmouth fan. At Portsmouth during the mid-80s, there will be a kids' penalty shootout every half-time between six children from the visiting supporters' team yeah, yeah. and six children from Portsmouth. 
Now, they were all aged between eight and nine. Now, for some reason, the Pompey children were the same six at uh, halftime in every home game. Mm. Same six kids. And the child wearing the number six shirt was incredibly overweight. Oh. OK. Oh, now, no, now, 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 being number six, I'd... he was forever destined to take the final penalty. Very bad karma. As the kids were young... And the goals are huge. Of course, a lot of the penalties were scored. So nearly always it was 5-5 when our child came up to take the penalty kick, at which the then packed and now pre-demolition Fratton End will start the continuous roar, starting very low of Fat Boy, Fat Boy, Fat Boy. <laughs> no, I'm Fat Boy, not... Fat Boy, Fat Boy. Now, and the number six would without fail send his kick wide. <laughs> yeah, but you see, this is the thing. You, I mean, uh, you know, I'm you, not finished. No, oh. As the season progressed and Portsmouth became obviously they were going to get him promoted, the ground became fuller and fuller and fuller, and so more people went. Fat boy, fat boy, fat boy, fat boy. I, you know. I, uh, no, no, I'm, I, I would. Uh, there are very few times I would use the seven-second delay. But we, you see, you weren't a fat child. Neither was I. No, no. But you see, I get plenty of gypsum so right now. No, no, we both get gyp, But we are now reached the full estate of man. And people, as we walk there, I, I think I will encourage everyone to wear the hair shirt here. If you see Danny or I in public at any time of the next few, you may want to shout. What change is this going to make? Boy, no, it won't be you're right. <laughs> what change is that well, going to make? The same fat boy instead of the yeah. usual. Yes. <laughs> fat boy, fat boy. Boy, fat, boy, fat, boy, fat, boy. No, you see, I, I, I can't go along now, with that. However, like that. Paul under, Peter understands here that the child who must now be in his late teens or early 20s and having been no doubt mentally scarred for by a yeah. whole season of this abuse, I await with trepidation the day he returns to Fratton Park with a gun. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think he's, I, th I think yeah. now he's probably, uh, you know... He's, he's Website for that, football365.co.uk. <laughs> you can read it all oh, week. Right. Bump someone through there, uh, Phil. It's line four, and this will be somebody called Joanne. Good evening, Joanne. Evening, Danny. Hello, Hello, evening, Joanne. Now, Joe, uh, this morning, as I say, you did up to you sound much better spirits now. This morning, yeah. a lot of people said she sounds a bit down uh, because you've uh, cleared your love closet out. You've, you've uh, yeah. swept the foul rag and bone shop of the heart. I'm feeling much better now. I've been yeah, out spending my five grand. Oh, of course. Oh. Your five grand you got from a Premier League manager to yeah. return photographs and letters. And I've sent some things to you in the post. And I've remembered Phil this time as well. Hang on. <laughs> no, 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 the last time, don't go Last time you sent us chocolates, and, and they were great. That they was, were great. That was very good. That was very good. But when you... When you what? <laughs> what? What did you send us? Um, I was surprised. Both three really helped me choose them. So, you have to wait and see. I've got to drive the, I've got to drive the mouth. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, you know... Shoes. He no, I'm gone. Shoes them. Okay. Hey, well, you know, it's a pair of drawers. Obviously a pair of drawers. It's a pair of drawers, isn't it? <laughs> It's a pair of drawers, isn't it? I'm not saying. Oh, it's a pair of drawers. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Baker and Kitty on Talk Radio. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, three, so this, this is another Premier League. Uh, pretty, uh, they were ch helped you choose them. Yeah. All right, it didn't help you use them because no. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lose gonna, them. I'm going to hope the pack of the tongs. No, they're just perfectly innocent Christmas presents. It's oh. a pair of drawers. It is a pair of drawers, Joe. It's a pair of drawers. I've only ever sent one pair of drawers, but I couldn't conjure up the image. It might have been noticed. That was below two, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it might, you know, it could be uh, just a uh, bloke sent me these, or you don't know. But no, I know what Joe looks like. I'm sorry, I I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> if I get sent a pair of drawers, I've gone. Anyway, Joe, that would be, yeah. seem to be sidetracked into being yeah, sent pairs really of drawers just here. Yeah, you mentioned that quickly. But... Yeah, okay. Uh, pair yeah. of drawers, is it then? That's that was, right. yeah. So, uh, uh, so and what, what, what? I've gone. Go. What's, what's happened in the last six or seven yeah, hours, Joe? Oh, I've been to a brilliant match this afternoon. I wish I could give you a big match report. No, not I'm even the score, because That's otherwise, nice. yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I've got the, the team's fanzine in front of me, and it's got an article about me and you in it. Oh? <laughs> Well, that gives them, that, uh, well, that, that, that no, confirms, no. you see, they may, they may just suspect. No, they, they've not mentioned that it's that club, it's just a general sort of media roundup. It's oh, it. no, that's all right, because you're in yeah. quite a few, we've actually been Xerox, yeah. quite a few yeah. fans that are talking about this, so there's about, I think all, all the Premier League clubs have actually fed, a lot of them now are fencing that it's you who, who you know, they say, oh, you know, it's I about know, our club. I don't club. think there's more than 15 or 20 websites devoted to the subject now at the moment, yeah. Uh, so, but it's, it's, it, this, this, you don't want to just uh, extend your... Um, um, uh, well, sexual relations with Premier League players just to keep the reputation going, though. No? Um, no, but I'll, I like she to likes do it, it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> would you? Would you? I mean, suppose about the lower leagues. Have you ever looked towards the lower leagues? No. Oh, uh, and it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. No wonder Darren Anderton says my watch cost three grand, want a kit with me, or whatever he's supposed <laughs> yes. alleged to have yes. said. Wow. Uh, if Darren Anderson showed you his three grand watch, would you be interested? Would you? Huh? He did do. Oh, he did do with you. Yeah. I thought it was another call. No. That was another call. 
No. What do you, what, uh, what, I mean, Darren Anderson's pure driven stone. He's got, it's absolutely unfair that he should have uh, ever been dragged into this. But seriously, would, would you sleep with Darren Anderson? No, I wouldn't. Uh -huh. Okay, hang on, let's go through Let's see who else is about. One minute, let's go through it. Uh, David Junilla. Yes. You would sleep with him, okay. Michael Owen. No. Why not Michael Owen? No, he's, he looks too much like a little boy. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's all right. There's nothing left. Well, no, no, I'll write your own vicar's joke there. <laughs> George Graham. No. He doesn't look like a little boy. Hang on, there's just a couple more. That's a couple more. Hang on, let's have a look. Uh, uh, who's this about? Hang on one second. Uh, West Ham's new whiz kid, Joe Cole. Mm, possibly. He's about 14. That's uh, well, <laughs> all right. I'm going to say a couple more. Let's do a couple more. Would you, do, 14 stones. Listen to Baker Kelly, and we're going through... Don't um, read out anyone I have slept with, Danny. Believe me, that's why I'm leafing through. I can't find one. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't forget what Danny thinks about it. Oh, right, here's, here's one. Here's one. Hmm. Arsene Wenger. No. There could have been a double bluff there. You don't know. There could have been a double bluff. Uh, all right, last couple. Les Ferdinand. No. Uh, oh, she's got it. very against first all of a players. Is that a deal? Uh, here's one. This is strange. How about this? Lennox Lewis. Possibly. Yeah, what? <laughs> Big old Lennox Lewis. I'd have thought so. But dang, a dang, dang. I'd have thought so. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what. Good day. Good day. Good day. I'm only imagining a woman's perspective here, and I should imagine women make those kind of remarks themselves all the time. Joe, what, what does the week hold for you? What are you looking forward to? Oh, I've just got to move to Danny Kelly, if I can. Yes, of course. Uh -huh. This is amazing. A woman came up to me today, Danny, said she knew you when you were a student. That's very possible. And she had a photo of you with her. All right. Oh, man, the lion! <laughs> this is... Hang on, get those big bellows. We want to blow this slightly further away from home. <laughs> That's the phrase. But dang it, dang <laughs> what, what, what was the deal with that, then? Um, well, you were giving her a really big hug on this picture. That was that was my way as a younger man. Mm. And she said she spent a really nice afternoon with you. Well, there you are. And she said to say hello. Her do name you, do you want to hear her name? Yeah, Maureen. Hmm. Hi, Maureen. <laughs> Maureen. <laughs> really? Yeah, and she, and she, and she now... produced a photograph which Dan could then buy back for five grand. Yeah. Did he <laughs> she now works at that club. Mm. Oh, blimey. Um, she works in one of the offices then. Man the alive. Office. Yeah. Now, this is the, the, isn't it an, an, an SW? It is. It is the S's of all I've W's, I've got no reason to disbelieve it because I understand the physical geography. Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah? Now, would, you, would you ever kick with me or Danny? <laughs> I would, one of you. Oh, it's me! It's me! It's me! It's me! It's me! It's me! No, it's me! It is! I've cut Joe off there, but it's me! Joe would kick with me. I, I think so. Uh, yeah, no, it is. It's a 50 50. What are you writing down there, there? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, say, Greg. Once a master. Once a master, always, always a master. master. Thank you very much. Joe, thank Don't you very much she's, indeed. She's, she's too seen good. the photograph of me with Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> When I met Joe the other week, and we met Joe, and, uh, and all this has been confirmed, yeah, I, well, I know we've got to do it, but when, I was wearing this jumper that made me look really fat. I mean, this uh -huh. jumper, and I keep saying I know, but I'm I, I, can't, I don't know what I was thinking of. Yesterday I looked great, I had a cowboy hat on, I think I looked rather sheesh. And, uh, uh, but, you looked uh, in the cowboy hat, like the, like the fellow who, who rides the bomb to Earth in Dr. Strange. Slim Pickens, yeah. Slim Pickens. Uh, we'll be back with the football phone in portion of the show straight away. Tonight's Danny Baker and Danny Kelly show. Four deep relief after today's pain and strains. There's no heat, like deep heat. Hello, Stuart. Where are you, Stuart? Hello, mate. I'm in Worthing. Thanks for hanging on, Stuart. What do you want to say? We've got right. first-class tickets. Go on. What I've got here is <laughs> Arsenal v Tottenham last week. Yeah. Taking the numbers off the backs of the shirts. Yeah. And relate them to me local Chinese and me local Indians. Oh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Now you're not wasting yeah. your time. This, this, you see, we went through a... Are you an Arsenal fan? I am. Ah, uh, see, we went something to do while the match was going on there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been fallow for a while. Well, you've been not as inventive as you could have been out there, but now you're back, 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 courtesy of this call. So right. you've taken the numbers off the backs of shirts and related them to... What What? what Chinese uh, establishment is this? Right, this, I've got the Chinese in, in Worthing here, New Dynasty. The New Dynasty, yeah. oh, yeah. And I'm using the Panchi Indian in Malvern Road in Kilburn, London. OK, that's all right. Why so not? Arsenal is one, recipe, one menu and Spurs is the other. Yes. Arsenal's the Chinese and Tottenham's the <laughs> Indian. Very good. All right? Yeah. You ready? Do you want to yeah. see? Do you want to hear him? What, what do you what? think? Do you want to hear a list of food? What do you <laughs> think? On the of RS. Go right. on. Here we go. In goal for Arsenal, we had New Dynasty Hot Hors d'Oeuvres Large. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what number was that? Number one. That's yeah. number one? Yeah, wow, that's they just... go straight in. Yeah. They start with seaweed and the prawn toast and stuff. <laughs> anyway, go on. All right, here we go. Here's the defence. 
Honey barbecue spare ribs, yeah. baked mm-hmm. spicy ribs, yeah. crispy vegetable spring rolls, mm. and deep fried squid. Oh, 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 this this is the only way to order food. And that's a, and that is a whole lot of food stuff with the hands held up in the air, coming <laughs> shouting for offside. <laughs> right, the midfield yeah. is satay chicken on skewer, mm. one ton meatball soup, yes. fresh whole crab, <laughs> and steamed large king prawns in garlic. <laughs> who who was the fresh whole crab? Patrick Vieira. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go and on. Up right, front. Up front, we had large ki- large butterfly king prawn yeah. Yeah. and sesame prawns. Yeah. But the best of it, the substitute was prawn crackers and fresh lobster. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and who was prawn crackers? Uh, it, 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 it suits him, honestly. Louis Bowie Morte. Oh, is it? He's <laughs> the prawn crackers? Yeah. Well, let, let, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm sorry to do this, but we're nearly yeah. out of time. Yeah, I mean, we've got to save Spurs. We're going to save Spurs for this evening. If you'll, right, be, you'll be the very first caller tonight. You can hear it. Let's go.